Hello my dear students welcome to today's session of english learning i am your teacher manika kaushal working as an english mistress at government senior secondary school gumanpura in district amritsar students today we will discuss a new topic and the name of the topic is paragraph writing so dear students let's get ready for today's topic and let's make it interesting by your active participation students let's get our ideas revolve around basics of writing we have four steps to follow and first of the step is letters what is a letter letter is a written symbol which represent one of the sounds in a language for example letter m letter k letter a and all the 26 letters of english language and the second one second is word group of letters that has meaning when spoken or written for example school education smart all these are the examples of word and third is a sentence sentence is a group of words which express a meaningful purpose let's have some examples for example i love my school i know students that all must be eagerly waiting for your schools to be reopened soon i also wish the same so the other example is i want to go back to my school this is an example of a sentence and now the fourth one fourth is paragraph what is a paragraph it is a group of sentences about one idea and the ideas must be interlinked always remember this point all the ideas they must be interlinked always so students i'm sure you must have understood by now all the four steps about basics of writing letter word sentence and a paragraph they form the basics of writing students before we move on to our today's topic let us talk about a few things here i am going to ask some questions from you and you have to answer these questions accordingly so here we go here comes the first question for you which is the best place in your school yes take your time to think about the answer the best place in your school yes some of you might be thinking about the computer room others might be thinking about playground and some might be missing their library and yes why not canteen so these are the best places in your school you must be thinking about right so here comes the next one what kind of books do you like to read books yes what kind of books do you like to read you know books give us immense pleasure students isn't it yes think about the answer we usually read story books some of you might be saying that they love to read magazines comic books science fiction books etc so books give us knowledge so this is the third one for you how often do you visit your school library well students you must be visiting your library in free periods but the question is how often yes of course some of you may visit library very frequently and some occasionally 
so here comes the last question how will you describe your school library yes how will you describe your school library students yes this question might be difficult for you so let us learn how to describe a school library in the form of a paragraph here is your school library let us describe the paragraph my school library let's read the paragraph a school is a temple of learning students school is a storehouse of knowledge that's why it's like a temple to us a library is an altar in it altar a place which is the center of a religious ceremony like other schools my school too has a big library it is housed in a separate block students you must have seen that most of the schools have separate blocks for library and the reason is that you need calm atmosphere and complete silence while reading the books it has about 50000 books in it the books are kept subject wise books of each subject are arranged separately so that students can get them easily they are kept in almirahs with glass panes in addition to books the library has a number of newspapers and magazines in punjabi hindi and english that's pretty interesting it means we can also read variety of other readable materials in a library each student has a card each student has been provided with a library card you must be having the same no student can keep a book for more than 15 days it means that the utmost limit for keeping the library books with you is 15 days only the librarian is very helpful kind and gentle but very strict you know students in every library there is an in charge of library that is librarian he or she issues the books and is always helpful and yes librarian has to be strict in order to keep required silence in the library so he maintains perfect silence and discipline in the library we go to the library in our free periods free periods they are often the best time to visit library we read newspapers and magazines in addition to newspapers and magazines there is variety of study materials in library the library is really useful to all of us not only useful but i would say the most important part and parcel of a school students since we have explored our ideas so now let's make a perfect plan for writing a paragraph as you know we always need planning in all the things we do in our life so the first step in the process we in front of you is planning in the planning stage we are planning everything starting from the topic and what are the things that can be assembled together 
So, the first step is planning. Now, comes to the second step. Second step is drafting, which means putting down all the points in a sequence from beginning till the end. Then, we have the third step, editing. Step number three, editing means rechecking everything, rechecking your spellings, rechecking your sentences, your ideas, whether they are in proper order or not. And after complete editing, we switch over to step number four, that is final step or final version. So, students, here we finalize the given topic. So, we have to keep all these four stages in mind while writing a paragraph. Let us move on. Now, we are going to discuss the details of three stages involved while writing a paragraph. The first stage is pre-writing stage, second one is while writing stage and the third one while writing a paragraph is post writing stage. So, here are the three stages of paragraph writing. The first step in writing is pre writing. This is the first stage. As you know pre means before. It means before writing the paragraph. This stage means chalking out a plan before writing. What the things that should be kept in mind? In this stage, we plan what is to be written. It is just like a mental work or writing rough sentences on a page. We choose adequate vocabulary and keywords. What should be the vocabulary items and the keywords to highlight the main points? That is what we are going to note down. In short, pre-writing stage includes thinking about topic or brainstorming. You just have to ponder or think about the topic, jotting down or writing down whatever comes to your mind. Okay, So, this is the pre-writing stage. Now comes the stage number 2 while writing stage. Here the word while means when the process is going on at the same time. So, while writing means the actual stage when we are going to make a rough draft. A rough draft is to be made in this stage. You have to list out the ideas you need to develop your write-up upon. We have to arrange all the ideas, compile them and we have to make a sequence so that it creates systematic development of thought. So, how to compile the body of the paragraph? While creating rough draft, keep in mind these three steps. The first one is introduction. Introduction includes starting lines about the topic you are writing upon. It means your topic should be highlighted in the first line. Second is main content. Elaborate on the details of the topic. Main content includes that you have to write everything in detail about the topic. And third one is conclusion. It means closing lines to sum up and conclude the paragraph. Here, conclusion means you have to give concluding lines or you have to sum up the paragraph. Now, third and final stage is post writing stage. Post means after. This stage comes when paragraph has been written. It means here you have written everything that you wanted to write and you have arranged every word and every sentence in a desirable 
sequence. This stage requires correction work. So you have to check if there is any error left and if it is then we have to go back to editing and revision of the write up. You have to do this kind of revision twice or thrice. Finally, the paragraph should be written flawlessly. Flawlessly which means without any error. So, every word and sentence has to be checked in the post writing stage. So, dear students, how many stages are there while writing a paragraph? We have discussed pre-writing stage, while writing stage and post writing stage. Students, you always need power to write a paragraph. And what does power means? Let us try to understand. Here P stands for planning. Plan means right choice of topic and collection of important points. O means to organize, to focus on single idea and to give relevant detail and to use interlinked sentences. W stands for writing. It involves introduction, body of paragraph and conclusion. E is used for editing, to correct grammatical mistakes, to edit and rewrite. And R means to revise so that it becomes an error free and effective paragraph. By following these steps of your powerhouse, we really get path to write an effective paragraph. Now moving on, we will try to understand which paragraph has perfect power out of these two paragraphs given here. Have you noticed some difference in these two paragraphs? Let me read it for you. First paragraph says, A school is a temple of learning. We go to canteen daily. My favorite place is school playground. In free period, we go to library. Our teachers teach us online. We carry food, fruit, and water bottles in a bag. This was the first paragraph. Now let's read the second one. A school without a library is unthinkable these days. It must have books on various subjects, newspapers, journals and magazines. Students who want to add to their knowledge go to the library in vacant periods and study. So, have you noticed the differences? In first paragraph, the writer is describing multiple of things. The sentences are not interlinked. There is no planning, no organizing of the content of given topic. So, there is lot of ambiguity and we are not sure about what the writer wants to convey. In first sentence, he is writing about importance of school. Then he is moving to canteen, then to playground, again he is going to library, then moving to online class and ends up with carrying food and fruit in his bag. So there is lot of ambiguity in this paragraph. And have you noticed the second one? Second one is written very nicely, focusing all the attention to the subject and the subject here is library. He is using interlinked sentences with relevant details. So, we can say the first paragraph is not appropriate to the topic whereas second one is perfect. Here pre-writing stage of planning and organizing plays an important role in developing a paragraph. So, students always use the concept of power while writing a paragraph. Students, now let's discuss some useful tips of writing a paragraph. The first one is understand the topic very clearly. You should know what you are going to write. Note down all the important points, right? 
and the second one is opening sentence should be very attractive and strong here you should make it sure that you start writing with the perfect opening sentence sentence should be clear and relevant try to engage the reader with a strong opening sentence and the third one give supportive statements and use interlinked sentences you have to interlink all the sentences related to the given topic for example if you are writing about a library then all the things should revolve around library only provide statements that support your content of writing and the fourth one stick to the topic till the end of your writing just stick to one line of thought students don't intermingle the different thoughts and follow the same criteria of writing till the end and the last one use a good concluding sentence here in case of generalized topic ending should be on a positive note and for problematic topic there should always be an ending with a solution so your concluding sentence should be perfect now let's recapitulate everything that we have discussed till now after this revision you will retain many things in your mind so let us revise the paragraph and for this revision you have to answer these questions the first question is where is your library situated yes here you have to tell the place where your library is and the answer for this my library is situated in a separate block of our school now the second question how many books are there in your library you have to tell the number of books which are there in your library so the writer told us that my library has about 50000 books and the third question where are the books kept place where books are kept in your library the books are kept in almirahs with glass panes so here is your fourth question in addition to books what other material does your library has it means does your library has books only or any other material too yes think upon that yes and your answer is the writer says that in addition to books my library has a number of newspapers and magazines here is the fifth question for how long you can keep a library book and the answer for the same is we can keep a library book for 15 days only here comes the sixth one who is the in charge of library i mean with whom you interact in the library and the answer is the librarian is the in charge of library here comes your seventh question what kind of person your librarian is yes think about the same exactly the librarian is very helpful kind and gentle but she is very strict too so you know the writer has already explained that now moving towards eighth question when do you go to library i mean at what time do you visit your library so do you remember what writer told us that we go to the library in our free period yes here you are right now the ninth question what do you read there what kind of things do you read there in the library so what's your answer exactly we read newspapers and magazines there and here comes the last one your 10th question how do you find your experience of library 
Yes, think about that. Exactly, the library is really very useful to all of us. So, the writer really liked his library. I hope you must have understood the concept of paragraph writing by now. And now let's write a small paragraph on a cricket match. Yes, your favorite topic. And for that, you all have to work upon these questions before framing the paragraph. Here comes the first question. Against which team you played the match? It means who was your opponent in the match? And the second one. Who won the toss? Which team won the toss? The third one is what did you decide after winning the toss? It means did you choose to bat or ball? Here comes the fourth one. What was the name of your skipper? Who was the captain of your team? The fifth one. Who hit maximum sixes in the match? It means which batsman hit maximum sixes in the match? And the sixth one. What was the score of your team? How many runs were scored by your team? Now the seventh question. How did your bowlers bowl? It means how was your team's bowling performance? The eighth question. How many runs were scored by the opponent team? What was the score of other team? And the ninth one. Who won the match? It means who was the winner of the match? And the last one is what did you do after winning the match? It means what kind of celebration was done by you? So students, we have here tried to give you a few suggestions. You just quickly go through these suggestions. Your first question was against which team you played the match? And the answer for this is we played against KDM school Amritsar. And the next one, who won the toss? Our team won the toss. Third one, what did you decide after winning the toss? And the answer for this is we decided to bat after winning the toss. Fourth question, what was the name of your skipper? Chetan was a skipper. And the fifth question is, who hit maximum sixes in the match? And your answer will be, a batsman Arav hit maximum sixes in the match. And the sixth one, what was the score of your team? You can randomly say our team scored 201 runs. Seventh question, how did your bowlers bowl? And your answer should be like this. Our bowlers created a very good impact while bowling. Eighth one. How many runs were scored by the opponent team? The opponent team was out for 180 runs. And the ninth question. Who was declared man of the match? Arav was declared man of the match. Last one. What did you do after winning the match? We started dancing in the field. Or you can use any of the words or sentences that you like while answering all these questions. So students, now put all your answers together in a paragraph form in the following blanks. See, you have compiled and organized everything. All these answers should be shifted on a blank paper and your paragraph is complete. I hope you enjoyed the entire session of this creative writing. So here, your English teacher Manika Kaushal thanks you all for patient listening and being there throughout the session. Hope it was fruitful for you all.
Thank you and have a nice day.